If there was one secret to language learning, this is it. I've been studying foreign languages for about seven years. It started when I took French in high school to fulfill a requirement. I took three years of the language before I went to France on vacation and I couldn't even order a meal for myself from a menu and make myself understood. Conversely, last year I took university level classes in French in France with all French university students. Of those seven years, I spent about half that time floundering, just trying to make it to an A2 CEFR level, which is totally ridiculous. So what changed? Going from not even being able to pronounce a word on a page to being able to express myself in an academic college setting. The difference is hard work, yes, but above all, the difference is mastery of pronunciation. Especially if the intention is not even to gain fluency, to just be able to hold your own in that country for a week, being able to ask where the restroom is, or which direction your hotel is, or uh, where the bathroom is. In that case, pronunciation is even more important than grammar. You can say something like, can I have a cheeseburger? and make yourself understood. But if you had no concept of pronunciation, maybe you said something like, can I have a I case a burger, which is grammatically accurate, I guess, but you might get a buffering signal from your server. So without further ado, here are some things you need to learn if you're trying to master the pronunciation of a language. So we'll top this list off with some of the most common pronunciation mistakes. And these are probably the most obvious on this list. And I'll start with a story. So a couple of years ago, I started tutoring this Russian guy whose English was already incredible. I mean, he had an accent, but for the most part, his grammar was fantastic. It was great. And we were chatting about music. He started to tell me about his favorite rapers. I was naturally taken aback. I mean, I really had to think for a moment what he was trying to tell me. And then of course, naturally, you know, it, it didn't take long for me to figure out that he meant rappers, but it had caught me so off guard. I mean, can you imagine if he had made that mistake in any other context? It's the difference between saying, I like that cat in French and I like female genitalia, which I mean, Fair enough, but is that what you meant to say? Now, if you're a language learner, you're going to be humble. You're gonna make mistakes. It's gonna be embarrassing. That comes with the fun of learning a language. That comes with the hobby. You have to be prepared for it. But you can also do what you can to minimize those mistakes. Now, the difference between a raper and a rapper is very large, but only semantically. Phonetically, the difference is one tiny vowel sound, and naturally, it's best to understand those differences. And that brings us to my next little tidbit. Now, if for some reason you missed this lesson in kindergarten, consonants are sounds in which obstruction of the airflow are required. Hello everyone, it is editing me. Um, I just want to remind you that I am humbled every day uh, by myself, and this is one of those moments. I meant consonants. 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 These are sounds like b, k, l, t. You get, you get the gist. Vowel sounds, on the other hand, allow the air to flow freely. This can mean that they're harder to recreate if you're not a native speaker or you're not used to that um, sense on your tongue or in your throat, and that is because there's less available direction. Take, for example, the American R, or linguistically termed the rhotic R. While not technically a vowel, it does require that the air is not obstructed or blocked. So how do you explain the difference between pronouncing bea versus bear, or likely quarter versus quarter? This is why the word mirror with that hard R is so difficult for many non-native speakers to pronounce. Similarly, squirrel, squirrel. In Spanish, you have the trill, and actually in many languages you have the trill, which I can't pronounce. And I'm sure you've all heard the French and German exaggerated accent in which the interdental fricative is overcorrected. So saying something like, the coffee is in the kitchen, that sound the th that appears in so many of our common words like the, this, that. It's rarely represented in other languages and that makes it hard for other people to pronounce it. And it's interesting too, because it's not only language learners that need to deal with this concept. Famously, actors also struggle with this. So you're not alone. It's not you. 
Well, it might be you, but let's just say it's tricky for everyone. So that moves us through to our next topic, stress and intonation. Maybe I'm just a huge nerd, but how would you explain the difference between progress and progress? They're clearly different things. They mean different things. They're different parts of speech, but they're spelled exactly the same. The meanings are wildly different, but how are we supposed to know which one you're talking about? It's the stress. In English, there tends to be a lot of words that are spelled exactly the same. They look exactly the same. Sometimes they're even pronounced exactly the same, but they mean so different things. There are so many examples of these homographs, things like transport versus transport, contract versus contract. The list goes on and on and on. And notice that if the stress falls on the second syllable of the word, it tends to signify a verb. Whereas if the stress falls on the first part, it's usually a noun. So like a contract is a formal piece of writing in which you agree to the rules and regulations within. You usually sign your name on the dotted line, etc. But if you contract something, it's usually like a disease. I don't know where the etymologies coincide. I don't know what, who decided that, what point in history that someone was like, yeah, that's a good idea. It doesn't matter, that's just how it is. And all I can say about that is that if you're learning this language on your own, or even really in schools, if you're learning this language at all, if you did not grow up with this language, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had this Russian teacher who taught English in Russia for a long time, and she told us that without fail, every single year when it got to spelling and pronunciation, kids would cry. Take a look at this sentence. Depending where you place the stress, where you bolden the word, it can create different nuances to the sentence. It can change the whole meaning of what you're trying to say. I never said she stole my money. That brings in the question, the who of the action. Whereas if you were to say, I never said she stole my money, that brings in the question, obviously, the action of the sentence. I never said she stole my money, maybe she stole something else. In this way, English is really fascinating, and frankly, I would be surprised if you couldn't do this with most other languages. Now, I will say, that does bring into question tonal languages. Languages like Mandarin actually use the pitch to determine one of four, I believe, possible definitions of that word. This difference in pitch that I mentioned, that's called the intonation, and that's our next point. But either way, intonation in tonal languages to an English speaker sounds crazy. Which is hilarious, because in a way we do this too, but in a less grammatical sense. We use intonation not to change the meaning necessarily, but the nuance of what we're trying to say. So it's the difference between this is your favorite book versus this is your favorite book versus this is your favorite book. So all of those things portrayed either a statement or a question and also a, an emotion. And that's interesting because it's the same five words spoken in different ways to convey different messages each time. I think it's so fascinating, but we all know I'm, I'm a nerd. So we've talked about things that you should be noticing within a language, but how do you actively improve your own pronunciation? You can do things like mimicking native speakers. If you have the energy to go through and put your Netflix, if you have the energy to go through and watch that Netflix and that in your target language, This means like maybe you could go through YouTube, maybe go to easy German, easy Russian, easy Italian, whatever one you want to do. They have one for most um, EU languages. So we've already talked a lot about the little things that you can notice to get you started on your road to mastery of pronunciation in your target language. But what are some ways that you can actively improve. One of the best things you can do outside of just getting yourself a language partner and just trial by fire speaking until you can't speak anymore um, would be to mimic native speakers. And you can do this by finding a YouTube channel or watching Netflix in that target language. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it is an arduous process if you do it this way, because what I'm telling you to do is to find a YouTube video, maybe do the Easy Languages podcast. They have Easy German, Easy French, Easy Italian, Easy Russian. Most any EU language or top world language you can find that they've done. What I like about it is that they interview natives off the street given a, a theme. So like if the theme of that episode is music, they'll go do some street interviews and say, hey, like, what are you listening to? What's your favorite group? What do you like about them? What's your favorite record? Have you seen them in concert? whatever, and they always have subtitles underneath so that you can read what they're saying in that language as well as the translation to English. Now, I guess I have to stop there and tell you that it is an English-based 
platform. So if English is not your mother language or if it's not that strong, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm only going off my own experiences and the things that I use for myself. So I'm sorry, I can't help you there. If you want to give it a try, can recommend. But anyways, you find an episode with a topic that you're interested in and if there is, if they use a piece of vocabulary or maybe a contraction that you haven't heard, what you'll do is you'll pause the video, listen to them speak it, and try to recreate that from your own voice. And keep doing that until you can hear a difference, until you seem like you, you feel like you get it well enough yourself. Another way that I like to do it, although I haven't found software that is best for this, uh, so I'll leave that to you to find, but anyways. My next step for you would be to record yourself speaking for at least a minute, like every day or maybe a couple times a week. Uh, record yourself speaking, give yourself maybe a theme or a question that you think you could speak for a long time on, about. See, my English is already, whew, y'all. What is English? And this is positive for a lot of different reasons. You can hear yourself make mistakes, which is fantastic, if not humbling. And you can also see where your grammar messes up. And now that's not, that's not the purpose of me talking in this video, but it's another thing that you can work on. As well as it's worth mentioning that there are tons of pronunciation guides online. Uh, some are more comprehensive than others. I find that there are a lot of websites dedicated to specifically like Russian pronunciation and it looks like these websites haven't been updated since 2004. It, you're not there to look at the aesthetics of the website. You're there to learn Russian or learn whichever one you are interested in learning. So you can find speech recognition software and apps in which you can record your voice and it will go through and evaluate areas of improvement. I've never heard of these, but I did a little bit of research and apparently these are websites like Speechling, Elsa Speaks, and Pronunciation Power. So I can uh, drop a link in the description below to those if you're interested. But to wrap it all up, really it just depends on what you want to get out of this experience. What are you looking to learn? If you're going to Italy for a few days, you don't necessarily have to learn the entire language unless you really want to, in which case, power to you. Like, you do you, go for it. I, I think that's fantastic. But for the rest of us, for most people, the goal is really to just learn a couple of phrases, be able to order a meal on your own, ask directions, things of that nature. So one thing you can do is come up with a list of things that you think you're gonna need to know, Google Translate it, hit that little microphone button, listen to it until you think you've got it, or honestly, if you go to Google or ChatGPT, as per my last video, and you type in, what are some basic phrases I need for a trip to wherever? There you go. If you really are looking to engage with this language and learn and, you know, interact with the culture and the history and the context of its people, then learn the language, listen and repeat it. You know, find sounds that sound entirely similar to your own language or entirely dissimilar. Um, I know that during my time in Russian, the ey, 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 like, I, I can't even do it right, I think. Um, but there's this <laughs> symbol um, that gave us all so much grief. And that's because it doesn't exist in English and the activation of your throat muscles aren't used the same in English as they are in Russian for this specific letter. So all that being said, pronunciation is absolutely key. Make sure, please, please make sure Focus on the pronunciation. You can do things like join language exchange communities. I mean, I've said this a billion times, but I'll link, I'll link this video I did like months and months ago. It's a little cringy. Uh, I've grown a lot in my YouTube experience, but it is still good information uh, if you want to find a free or almost free language partner. There are some really good tips here. Now, unfortunately, I do have to say it's always preferable to practice pronunciation with a native speaker who will point out your mistakes. It's not ideal for everyone. It's, it can be tricky to find someone uh, with whom you connect, with whom you can really just go at it. And that's not what I meant. Um, you know what, you, you get it. But really in terms of not only your pronunciation, but your confidence in that language, unfortunately that is 
the best way to go. <laughs> if you want other tips, other ways to learn, check out my page. If you really like this, you can like or subscribe. It would really, really help me out. Um, but yeah, I love you and have a good one. I just got kicked out of that classroom by the kindest security guard. She's like, just so you know, there's nothing scheduled in here, so I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. We have to lock up. I'm like, okay, no worries. <laughs> We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.